All right, we finally are here the week of the election. We are also in the middle of some earnings and we've got a Fed rate cut coming this week, but the market already knows what the Fed is likely going to do. They've priced in a 25 basis point rate cut, but more importantly, what is he going to say? Because what we want, what the market wants, is to see that unemployment largely is staying under control and inflation's coming down. So if both of those are true and the Fed is easing, then it's truly a Goldilocks environment and the market can continue to go higher despite the high valuations and despite despite the fact that Warren Buffett is selling his portfolio right now. He's cashing up, sitting on more money than Berkshire Hathaway has ever sat on before. Tonight, after the market closes, is going to be their earnings, and likely they're going to be positioned pretty well because this is a trade people are moving risk off because of how high the markets have climbed in 2023 and 2024, and they trust the Oracle of Omaha, and so the stock price has continued to climb. We're gonna see what happens with their price today. In addition to that, we've got Palantir. Now, before I get into Palantir, I wanna briefly give you guys some inspiration for why we mess with Wall Street. Why do we mess with Wall Street? Why do we fight these markets and come every single day trying to figure out uh, what's the best company to invest in? Well, I'm gonna tell you a little story about NVIDIA, which happened to surpass Apple again for the highest market share company in the world. And the story is that if you had bought NVIDIA back in 1999, if you had scraped together a mere $1,000 and bought NVIDIA stock, a little chip maker, a little tech company, you would be a millionaire today. You would have $2.4 million. Now, if you had a little change to invest and you actually had $100,000 to invest, just six years later, back in 2005, you still could have gotten on the rocket ship and you would have, with that $100,000, you would be worth over $77 million and you'd be part of that one percentile in America that's in a league of their own wealthy. That's why you mess with Wall Street. But highlighting that point, I also want to illustrate that you need to have some long-term investment picks, okay? Palantir, for me, is one of them. And tonight they report earnings. And whether it goes up or down, I believe in this company long term, it's hard to find companies that have yet to really gain their position, their ultimate market share, even though the Palantir valuation by some would be considered high. The fact is they may not be anywhere where they may be one day. And so if you're riding the roller coaster, even if Palantir comes down today because there's a miss on their earnings, if you believe in it long term, you gotta find the next NVIDIA. Do I think that Palantir is that? No, I can't say that I know that, but it's one of these companies that I definitely put on the other side of the ledger as a long-term buy and hold to see what they might become. They are one of these companies on the forefront of AI and security. They're the right type of technology company that the world's going to need, that the government's going to use, that could exponentially grow with ongoing contracts and ongoing spending, and they could become much bigger than they are today. Well, we're going to find out what happens with them tonight after earnings. Now, I want to highlight, I see on the chart, a bearish, slightly ascending head and shoulders pattern, okay? Now, what this means is that if we get a little bounce like we did today at 41, we could push up to $44 and make the right shoulder. So if it fails there and it comes back beneath $41, then we know that we're gonna have more downside and it could come back to 35, even as low as $32. However, if it shoots above $44, then we're gonna get that $49 to $50 Palantir. Those are my targets for you. So we've got the election this week, and I've been talking about it for the last month, like a lot of people, and I mentioned that we would sell off before the election, which we did. I wanna give you some other typical uh, happenings that occur the week of the election. Typically, 
the market rallies on the day of the election pretty strong. But the very next day, there's a little bit of a pullback. Now, the market's been following its past uh, trends for the last two cycles. It's been doing somewhat the same thing. And so I'm expecting after today's pullback, we could see a nice little bounce because people may be wanting to get in before the market begins to rally here in November if, uh, if the market is going to do that. And typically, whether you get a Republican or a Democrat, and I know it's going to bust some people's bubble, but once the, the uncertainty of the election is behind the market, the market tends to rally. And so it does not matter what side you're on, if you are invested in Wall Street, once we're past this election, there's room for these markets to go higher. It doesn't mean that that's exactly what's going to happen. It's just what's typically happened the majority of the time. So let's talk a little bit about what might happen depending on who wins. Well, we have seen, obviously, in recent days, Elon Musk has had a very strong alignment with Donald Trump. Matter of fact, Donald Trump has talked about putting him to work uh, in the DOGE, Department of Government Efficiency, right? And that's given a little bit of a bump to Doge. However, if Donald Trump does not become president, then I think that all of this extra attention that Elon has given Donald Trump is going to have created some enemies in the Kamala presidency if that occurs. And so we're gonna see perhaps them face some headwinds. And I could see that Rivian might be a benefactor of that tension. Rivian's earnings are this week. And so if Kamala wins, I'm going to be playing a lotto trade on Rivian to the upside. Overall, if Donald Trump becomes president, I think it's going to be very bullish for crypto. He's had a very strong alignment with crypto. We're going to see Bitcoin, gold, and oil probably do very well if Trump becomes president, and we're likely going to see some alternative energies pop if Kamala becomes president, such as Enphase and First Solar. So it's definitely going to be a volatile week. In addition to that, we've got a number of companies reporting earnings like Palantir and Berkshire Hathaway today, SMCI reporting Tuesday. SMCI just seems to be a dumpster fire right now, so I'd be surprised if they could pull off a, a reversal or a turnaround. So I was asked today, is this one that we should just lotto trade puts on going into earnings? And if you follow the last two earnings, that would have worked very, very well. On Wednesday, ARM, A-R-M, is reporting earnings. On Thursday, Rivian is reporting earnings. So if Kamala wins, by Thursday, going long on Rivian, and then Friday, Sony is reporting. In addition to that, we get the Fed rate decision Thursday at 2 p.m., and the Fed's going to talk Thursday at 2.30 p.m., and what the market wants to see is that he's committed to more cuts to give this market the incentive that it can continue to climb through the rest of this year and in 2025 because we don't have the catalyst or the bad data to crash the market just yet. We've got a bunch of ominous dark clouds over the market, but the storm hasn't begun. And so until, until that tidal wave, hurricane, earthquake comes through, this market's going to continue to climb. In the Stocks with Josh Discord this morning, I shouted out a couple plays. I'm going to give you guys them today and give you a little bit of an overview of what I'm expecting. These are trade setups that I really like going into this week, and some of them have already begun to go the direction that I thought they might go. Boeing, it's got very strong bullish divergence on the weekly chart, and so it doesn't appear as if the bears can drag it any lower. So I like Boeing above $156. Now, Apple unfortunately gapped down on their earnings, and so I like them as a short below 220. Amazon gapped up on their earnings, and so I like them as a long above 200. And I like Nvidia going into this earnings. I think that it's going to continue to have some momentum to the upside. I like them as today I pointed out in the Stocks with Josh Discord that it needed to recapture the 20 EMA to go back on offense and get above $136. It did that. And so right now, that's the first step towards moving higher. But to really break out, it's got to get above 140. And if that happens, we could really see this thing take off. Right now, I'm in some longs on NVIDIA. 
So that's the breakdown for the week. If you want more technicals and you want more trade setups, you can find me in the Stocks with Josh Discord, the Chart Goat University. I'm going to be doing live trading Wednesdays and Fridays. I'm going to be doing some charting this week as well for the community. Come check it out. Hit the like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in tomorrow's video.